Some say this is a math teacher's favorite car because of all of the shapes. And another person may say it's the hot boy racer of the 21st century. Well, another group might just say if you enjoy Four Locos, you'll love this car. Even though it comes in the wrong wheel drive, it comes with a fancy red sticker on the back, way more shapes than I care to imagine on a car. And apparently, it's now worth more than even the manufacturer thought it was two years ago. This is Arlen's 2019 Honda Civic Type R. In the second season of Behind the Wheel, we're going to actually decide if buying a car that's worth more than it was from the factory is actually worth it because why ever save money in 2022? There's so much plastic. Well, let me just see if I can get in here. Oh God. Wow, look at this. You know, one of the great things about it being a Type R is that you can see that the Honda badge is imprinted absolutely everywhere in the car, specifically the Type R. There's so much two-toned red in here. Oh, I found the Honda part. Incandescent bulbs. You might be wondering yourself, is it worth to get a Honda Civic Type? Is it worth to get a Honda Civic Type R? And the answer is it, it's going to depend specifically on how we treat this car over the next 30 to 45 minutes. Because in all honesty, not even I've driven a Type R before. I drove an old Civic once. Um, I was able to put my left leg through the floorboard because it was so rusted. And one time I put it through when we were driving at 25 miles an hour and the entire bottom of my shoe got ripped off. I don't think that's gonna happen here, but something close may occur. This is it. This is, I feel like Doug DeMuro with this. This and this is the Honda Civic Type R. And this is a 2019, this is Arlen's. And uh, when I asked him for the mod list, he essentially told me that the only modifications that he has done are wheels, which are Novia Titans, 18 by nine and a half. Uh, tires, some Blizzax, because we are driving this thing in the winter time. Um, and I believe an intake. No, just kidding, not even that. Just an exhaust, apparently a full exhaust. I don't know what full entails, whether that's head or back. He didn't really give me much information, um, but he does have an intake that's sitting in a box in a garage. So, right. Um, this is a 306 horsepower single turbo VTEC, so practically twin turbo, high 200 horsepower, foot pounds of torque, front wheel drive, sports car. Now, the greatest thing about the Honda Civic Type R, or what is the greatest single thing about the Honda Civic Type R, is the manual seats. You might be wondering, Alex, why are you sitting so close? And I will explain it to you. It's because I want to do hood wretch in a car that's not mine. Now, see, you're just going to want to hold on a little bit because I just want to like... Wow, that was pretty good. Now the fun thing to remember about Honda Civic Types R is obviously they're front wheel drive. So they have a helical limited slip differential in the front. And one of the biggest things that plagues front wheel drive cars or what people think plagues front wheel drive cars is a lot of that torque steer, especially when you drop it. God damn it, Steve. Now one of the greatest tests that you can do with a front wheel drive car, specifically if you're in classifieds and you're looking to buy one and the previous owner doesn't go with you, is you just do this. Just, you kind of want to just... The power curve is so nice. And even on the Blizzax, it does really well. Not bad. Now, one of the things I can say outside of the actual feel of the car is that it is quite expensive. When you get a Sonda Civic Type R these days, they're still sitting in the 30s range. I mean, I honestly believe last time I checked, the cars were going above MSRP. Now, the world is ending and everything sucks, but besides the point, that doesn't change the fact that people are still buying these cars for more than what Honda thought that they were worth because of the inflation and the demand of the car. This one comes in championship white. Probably my favorite thing about the car is the fact that this does come in championship white. Great color, great combo with the red. I enjoy the two-toned seat belts and I enjoy the two-toned seat, but when you start telling me that you're putting carbon fiber absolutely everywhere that still looks like the stuff that you get in aisle nine, I'm not entirely sure that's where I'd want my money spent. I'd rather have my money spent on additional tires, which is probably one of the biggest cons of actually owning this car. This car will eat 
I mean absolutely eat through tires. And you would too if you got to drive a front wheel drive car like this that has 300 horsepower and a turbo. Now, last thing you might be trying to do is if you're a <coughs> family man and you're looking to find a car that can do <laughs> family stuff, the Honda Civic Type R might be the car that you'd want to get, most specifically because it has a back seat. Let's not, you know, give it that much credit though, because you'll probably have to take off your legs to actually fit in the back seat if you have anybody in the front seats. But the trunk is great, the spacious is awesome, the gas mileage is terrible, but that's mostly because you're gonna drive this thing like like a hot boy racer. I mean, the design of the car is built around people that love aggressive lines and aggressive, sharp, angular things. I mean, it comes stock with a wing that's so goddamn big, I can't even see it out of the rear windshield. Like, it's not even there. It puts Subaru to shame. All right. I was just trying to get, I was just trying to get, uh, it, it crossed the four-way. A lot of people would argue that some of the predecessor Type R's in the lineage were a little bit less aggressive in terms of the aesthetics of the car. They didn't look as, as if, I don't know, they looked like a Gundam pilot's like favorite anime Friday night, you know, session when everybody's at sleep. But what I can say is the car looks really good without having to do a lot of stuff to it. Get it on some lowering springs, get it on some coilovers, get it on some wheels and tires, and you pretty much have a really decent look for a car that comes with plenty of power, it comes with plenty of grip, it comes with plenty of everything. And it comes with so many badges that have the letter R on it that I would argue it's worth the upsell. That's not worth the upsell. That is an incandescent bulb that's $39,000 in a car. That is not what I would probably put my money towards, but it would have been nice to have a little bit maybe, you know, non-incandescency in here. You can see where the Honda exists in the car, right? And you have to be okay with that, but you do get it in some of the center console things here in the steering wheel, and you do see it in the dash, and you do see it in little hiding places, but, that's the cost of having a car that is like everyone's favorite parallelogram. It is a beautiful car and it looks fantastic. The colors that it comes in are great. The driving experience is fantastic. You're probably gonna eat through more tires and a little bit more oil than you're prepared to. And of course, at the end of the day, people are going to bash on these cars. A lot of people bash on these types of cars. So you do have to be okay with that. And if you're not okay with that, well, I have some bad news for you. Hey, there's Rick Guerrero. I whoop his ass in this car. He's got a Golf R, but he doesn't know how to drive it. This thing, I know how to drive it. On Blizzax, no chance. Line that, line that sucker up, bro. Line it up. It's got a rear view camera. That is fantastic. What does this do? Wow. Does it beep at you? Nope, it does not beep at you. Now, based on my super subjective opinion and rating of this car, and the fact that I love the color and absolutely hate the two-tone interior, I would rate this car a 28 out of 40. A five on the interior, an eight on the exterior. Performance is an eight because you can dump the clutch and it didn't break when I was driving it. And the modification capability is a seven, but Arlen's modification capability is a two. If a Mohawk was a car, it'd be a Honda Civic Type R. And if the car was a movie, it'd be the Hexagon from Flatland. If you're looking for wheels, tires, and suspension though for your Honda Civic Type R, be sure to check us out over at fitmentindustries.com. And if you'd like to see this car in the gallery, we'll drop a link below. If you'd like to be reviewed in the next episode of Alex vaguely comparing cars to movies and different audio references from the early 2000s, be sure to let us know in the comments section below. I'm Alex, Alex at FI on Instagram, and we will see you later. Peace.